Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be sharing with y'all nine things that I've learned from living here in China. So if you're new here, my name is John. I'm an American and I've been living here in Guangdong, China for over 13 years, almost 14 years now. Last but not least, I want to say if you like this video, hit the like button so other people can find it. And also, if you like this type of content, hit the subscribe button and stay on the lookout for more new videos. I appreciate it a lot. So let's dive into the list. Okay, so I'm gonna try to keep my list right. I know most people do these list videos. They say, oh, 10 things or something like that. And they go one, two, three, oh shit, I forgot. All right, so today I'm gonna try to do it good. I actually wrote down my list of talking points so I don't forget. And if I do forget, I can look and then we'll they keep our list nice and you know nice and tight right so number one on the list is going to be family values this is something i've learned a lot about here in china because in china family is super 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 of the like the utmost importance a lot of chinese people they are even in their 30s and they're working in a normal job and normal life and all this stuff but they're still living at home with their parents and then even when they get married oftentimes uh, the parents will move in with with the children and their wife and or husband and grandkids all this stuff they'll all live together even after marriage so it's kind of like the parents raise the children the children grow up children raise the parents and they don't live separate lives and for me i think this has helped me a lot this is what i said come the learning comes in is because i've learned how these families uh interact with each other and maybe I've some, had somewhat of a dysfunctional family as a child. So it's helped me to try to uh, repair those relationships that I had with my family in the past. And now uh, I treat my family much different and they treat me much different than we did in the past. And I think that's due to some of the things that I've learned about how to be more open-minded to prepare my mind and how to deal with certain things within my family. So the family values here have really helped me a lot and I've learned a lot from looking at Chinese families. So number two we're going to talk about is going to be education. Okay, education in China is extremely important for Chinese people. There is a huge emphasis on education and the quality of education according to like Chinese parents, right? Chinese parents always like they'll spend huge amounts of money on education for their kids for private schools and after school tutoring and all the kind of crazy stuff like lots of really big stuff right like they're spending money on these things like and it's all it's not for play it's all straight education learning something or learning some skills and they spend a lot of money on it and that's actually one of the reasons why the Chinese population is not growing like it was because the cost of education can be super expensive and a lot of young couples are delaying having children or not even having children because they're trying to become more financially stable before they do because they want to provide the best education for their children. So a lot of them are, are holding off on having children or not having multiple children and things like that for this particular reason because the cost of education is so expensive and it's so important to them. That's one of the things that I've learned about education is like basically how important it is because, I mean, you don't have to go to school to get education. You can learn it from, you know, other places, you know, from watching videos and, uh, you know, reading books and things like that. But the important thing is education is to like always be learning something, no matter in what form it is, whether it's, you know, like I said, it's in a book or video or it's formal education at a school. It's always good to learn something, right? So that's something I've learned from living in China. Okay, so number three I want to talk about is going to be Chinese tourism, All right? So what I mean by that is, Chinese people in general know more about the entire world than we know about Chinese or China, Chinese people, right? And because Chinese are the number one tourist in the world. So that means more Chinese people are traveling all over the world than any other nationality is traveling. So Chinese people are traveling the world, they're seeing the world, they're learning other cultures, they're learning, you know, all these different things from all over the world. And a lot of us just face it, we don't go anywhere or we just go somewhere nearby home or somewhere in our home country without traveling to other countries. So they're very well versed and well educated in the world in general. So that's something that I learned recently 
Um, but you know, everywhere I go, I see Chinese tourists. If I go to, when I go to other countries, you know, I go to Philippines and Cambodia and Thailand and uh, Korea, Japan, all these places, and I always see Chinese tourists in those places. So um, you know, they're everywhere, and they learn a lot, and they know a lot more than we know about them. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is gonna be number four on my list, and it's all about money, saving money in, in general, saving and or managing money, right? Because, uh, you know, in America, for us in America, we get paid every week or every two weeks in America. In China, they only get paid once a month. And so what that has helped me do is to budget and manage my money better. And it's helped me, uh, you know, over time have a large amount of savings due to learning how to budget and manage my money. Because, you know, let's face it, in America, even I was making the same money or more or whatever than I make here, I was kind of living paycheck to paycheck because, um, you know, you spend some money, you get paid, whatever. Then you think, ah, oh, it's okay, I'll spend some money. I get paid in like two more days. The week's almost over, it didn't matter, right? And then next thing you know, you're spending money, spending money, and you don't have any savings left over from that. But here in China, because you get paid once a month, you kind of learn to be more frugal about things because like you get paid. And then for example, say you go out and eat a nice dinner or something, then you think, Okay, pay my rent. Next thing you know, you're like, eh, I better not spend too much money. I'm afraid I'm gonna run out of money before I get paid. Then what I do, you know, I'm in a foreign country, whatever, this kind of stuff. So you tend to save a lot of money. And then next thing you know, you get paid and you still have three quarters of the money that you got paid last time because you're like so frugal and scared to spend money. Next thing you know, you just like amass a big pile of money. So saving money, budgeting, managing money, something I've learned how to do really well from living here in China. Okay, the next one is gonna be number five, which is gonna be being open-minded. Now, before I came to China, I would say I was kind of, I would say I was closed-minded, but I was kind of like set in my ways. And like, you know, there's certain things that I did or would do, and I didn't really think about other things, doing other things or think about other people in general. I just thought about myself, I'm do what I wanna do. If you like it, you like it, you don't like it, you don't like it, this kind of thing, right? But being around other people and other cultures and things like that, I've learned to be more open-minded, especially after learning the language, because I realized that there are some different things happening in terms of culture and like why people look at things a certain way or why somebody might do this thing. Even though I wouldn't do it, I can understand why they would. So I become more open-minded and more accepting to other people's ideas and culture and preferences and all these things. I just become more open to those type of things. So I think that's a great benefit to be open-minded because you know you can see things from many different perspectives other than just your own when you start thinking like, when you start understanding like how these people are thinking about something and it just really opens up some new doors for you and makes life easier, right? So the next one I wanna talk about is gonna be number six, which is obviously learning a language. So when you move to another country, especially like China, sometimes you won't find many people who speak English and it's almost necessary to learn the language. Even if you're not 100% fluent, if you learn enough to communicate and to get, get around on your own without help, then that's definitely a big advantage for you. Like myself, I'm not 100% fluent. I can read a little, but not much. I can't write almost anything, just a little bit, but I can speak and communicate with anybody about any topic at, a, at least a basic level about anything. And it's come to the point now where I even have dreams sometimes in Chinese language. So my mind's like always kind of like in two different places. So um, it's a great benefit of, you know, having another language, especially learning Chinese, because Chinese is like the second biggest economy in the world. And maybe soon they might be number one. And we're all gonna have to do business with China in some way or some sort of fashion. And because China is so big, Chinese culture could possibly also be spreading like to the point where it's like like how America is now, you know, American culture is all over the place. Chinese culture might be that way too. And if you know the language, you'll better understand, you'll you know understand better what's happening and why it's happening and things like that. So learning a language has definitely been something great in my opinion. So the next thing I wanna talk about, which is gonna be number seven, number seven on my list. This one is, I don't know, some people might disagree with me, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this anyway, I'm gonna say, China is more like a continent and not a country. And I say that because 
when people think of China, they just think of like Chinese people or, you know, Chinese language, like Mandarin, and they think of, you know, like some things like the Great Wall, or you might think of Shanghai or something like that. And a lot of people don't think about other things, but actually China is very, very big and diverse with so many different things. When it comes to languages, I can't remember how many, but there's like a hundred, more than a hundred different languages. There's so many different dialects and stuff inside of China. So many different cultures inside of China that are all different. And on top of that, like every place, every province, every region, every area has their own special foods and their own special cultures and things like that. So you can literally just go to the next province and it's completely different. And you go to the next one from there and it's completely different. So there's just so many different ways of, uh, you know, that people communicate and cultural differences and things like that. And on top of that, there's also so many different landscapes. Like here where I'm at in Guangdong, it's pretty much hot all the time. We basically have summer for like 10 months of the year and what I consider to be spring, because it's cool, but not cold for a couple of months. And then it's summer again, right? And there's, you can go even further south like to Hainan, it's like the island here in China. And it's basically summer almost all the time. And if you go north to the very north of China on the border of Russia, they have winter for like six months and it snow, it like literally snows for like six months up there sometimes. So just like so many different extremes in, in climates and landscapes. You have beaches, you have mountains, you have forests, you have like ice cold, like up north where everything's frozen. It's just, you have everything. So you can literally just stay in the same country and just go somewhere else and totally different culture, totally different temperatures, landscapes, languages, food, everything's different. So more like a continent than a country, in my opinion. The next one is gonna be health, which brings us to number eight. So when it comes to health in China, there's definitely something I've learned from them when it comes to health. Uh, one of the things is being active when you're older. I see a lot of elderly people who are, you know, old, retired elderly people, every morning they're out jogging, they're in the park doing some type of martial arts or something. At night, once the sun goes down, you see these elderly ladies uh, like dancing. They do like this dance, like dance groups together for exercise. You might see a group of like 20, 30, 40, 50 ladies dancing together. They know the moves like chore choreographed dancing. It's like good exercise for them. Compared to America where people retire, they kind of sit around on the couch and watch TV all the time and don't really do much. That's their enjoyment of life sitting around as opposed to, you know, going out and being active. And then also when it comes to health for eating, you know, people, especially these like elderly people who are retired, I see them all the time cooking for the entire family. What they normally do, they will go to like a fresh market, like five o'clock in the morning and buy fresh meat and fresh vegetables to cook it for the lunch that day. And then they will go out again at lunch sometimes and buy fresh food again to cook for dinner. Instead of going to the supermarket one time for the whole week, they literally go once or twice every single day and buy fresh food just to make sure that the food is, it is the, the freshest it can be. So something I've learned about health and uh, you know eating fresh foods and staying active. And then number nine, the last thing on my list, the very end of this video is going to be, we are all alike. You, me, Chinese people, people living in America, Canada, India, you live in Africa, it doesn't matter what, what continent you live on, where you live in the world, really, we are all alike. We're all doing the same thing. We all wake up, we all eat, we all go to sleep, we work, we earn money, we play, we have fun. We all do the same stuff. Sometimes we just do it in different ways. So at the end of the day, you should be open-minded and embrace other people, other people's cultures, other people's ideas and mindsets. Embrace it, learn to be open-minded and try to learn about it because you might learn something interesting from those other people and it may improve your life. So I hope that's helpful. Again, if you like the video, hit the like button, share it with a friend, hit subscribe, come back for some more videos and I'll see y'all next time.